Hey, I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for joining us for this Adorama Pro video tutorial. This one's really exciting because it's high speed footage, over cranking, all that fun stuff. So here's the deal. You should be using high speed footage in almost every shoot these days. You don't even realize how often high speed footage is used. Anytime you see a Burger King commercial with lettuce flying up in the air or the burger flipping slowly in the air, that's high speed shooting. High speed footage is when you take your footage, you shoot it at a very high frame rate, and then you play it at a normal speed, and you get perfect, crisp, clean, super slow motion with no artifacting, with no ghosting, with no flares coming from you. It's terrific, crisp video. You might even call it extra crispy. Video, traditionally, before DSLR showed up, was shot at 29.97. That's basically 30 frames a second. Film was shot at 24 frames a second, or 23,994. What you can do on a lot of cameras these days is shoot at 60 frames a second, that's double the 30 frames a second that traditional video is, and then you can slow it down further in a nonlinear editing system, and you'll get that crispy video to some extent. You can only go so far. So some cameras, especially the lower end ones, that shoot high speed footage, do it at a smaller aspect ratio. For instance, the iPhone 5S shoots 120 frames at 720p, but the camera is capable of shooting 1080p at 30 frames a second. The GoPro also is the same way. If you want to shoot high speed, you're going to be shooting at 720. And that goes for cameras that shoot 4K as well. When they shoot high speed footage, will shoot the high speed at a smaller resolution, like 1920 by 1080. It shouldn't affect your production, but it's something that you need to know about. A lot of the cameras that have high speed built in only have a certain amount of time they can record a high frame rate. So you're gonna have to time the footage that you shoot. And it's per clip, and that's because they don't want the cameras to overheat. Now what you'll have to do is time your shots, and that's a skill you'll have to practice. A lot of people ramp the slow motion. They'll play the video back so it looks like it's regular speed, and then they'll slow it down at a certain point and then go back to regular speed. That's another great effect. This is an effect you should be using all the time in your video production. It will enhance every shoot. The biggest key to shooting high speed footage is that it needs a ton of light, so you really have to light it. It's sometimes hard to use LED lights, the best thing to do is shoot it outdoors in bright sunlight, and if you can't do that, then you should really work on your lighting scenarios. You certainly don't want any fluorescence on, and you also can't use LED lights. They'll flicker. Some LEDs you can get away with, but the fluorescents are definitely out no matter what. The higher the frame rate, the more flicker you will see. We have some clips to show you with iPhones, GoPros, We've used it with the FS700 from Sony, which is one of the more reasonably priced medium range cameras with detachable lenses that you can shoot high speed footage on. The FS700 will shoot 240 frames at full HD 1920 by 1080. If you go higher than 240 frames, it will still shoot it, but the resolution shrinks with each step you go. All in all, the key is to get a lot of light, to have some practice, to make sure the camera doesn't move, to use the right lighting if you're gonna use lighting, and to use this all the time as a great feature in your video. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do with all your high-speed footage. Thanks for joining us and watching this Adorama Pro video tutorial. I'm Michael Artsis.